Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing my updated current foundation routine. I am filming in a different setup today. So basically I just turned my camera and all of my equipment around. So what you would normally look at as my background, I'm now sitting at that desk facing my window. And I did this because last night I was laying in bed falling asleep thinking about how oh, I need to film my, film my foundation tutorial tomorrow. And I was like, I wish I could do it in a way where like they could see the natural daylight to actually like see my skin in the full HD. I don't know what I was thinking, am I crazy? Like wanting people to look at my skin bare in full HD, but whatever. Um, and so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna turn everything around. So now I have my camera, my lights sitting like in front of the window, but what you are seeing about 70% of it is natural daylight. Like I have the natural daylight right here and then I have two studio lights here on the side to kind of give a little, cause when I just used the natural daylight, it was bad. Like the side of my face was really dark cause the light's coming, whatever, I'm not gonna bore you. But that is why I changed it up and I thought, why not? I like it when I can change up backgrounds from time to time and give you kind of something else to look at cause the same thing can tend to get boring after, oh, I don't know, 75 videos. So that right there is a walk-in closet and then that right there is a bathroom. I'm just telling you that because sometimes when I watch videos, I, and there's like doors in the background, I'm so curious, like what's behind those doors? I'm like so scared that one's gonna like open up and one's gonna pop out at me, not to freak you out, but that is a bathroom and that is a closet. So. I know, I'm weird, but just so you know. Anyways, the point of this video, I'm going to be doing an updated current foundation routine. And the reason I wanted to do this video for you guys is because my foundation routine has definitely changed a lot from what it has been in the past. And recently I have been using a few different techniques and I've gotten a lot of requests for a full dedicated video on my foundation routine. So I want to go ahead and do that for you. I would really highly recommend everything I'm gonna show you guys in this video, this technique, this process to two different people. And that is either someone who is dry skin and looking for more hydration, moisture in your daily lives. And second of all, someone who is more normal dry to combination and looking for a dewy to glowy, healthy, natural looking finish as opposed to a full matte finish or a powdery finish. This one is going to be more of a hydrating glow finish, but at the same time, you are not going to be looking oily with this technique you are just going to be looking glowy we're not going to go so overboard that you're like oh my god she has been sweating her ass off all day long and needs to take a shower we're not going to look oily we're just going to look healthy so the first step that i'm going to do is prime my skin and i will say this is something that i used to not believe in and i just became a believer in primers throughout the past year to year and a half i would say i had never tried a primer that i actually truly saw a difference on my skin so i just thought like it's just a hoax, like it's not really working, but you know, it's cool if you wanna spend your money on it. But recently, I feel like they have really stepped up the entire primer game, and now I have found some that truly I see a difference on my skin. And mainly, these two are my ride or die favorites, and this one right here is the Makeup Forever Step One Radiant Primer. They have an entire line that's amazing. They have a mattifying one, ooh, that one will keep you matte. And then they have a hydrating one, they have a smoothing one, the smoothing one I absolutely love. And then this one over here, this is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. I talked about this in my recent favorite video. So beautiful, it has a very intense luminosity in it. So if you're dry or really looking for a glow, this is gorgeous. I wear this even when I'm not wearing makeup just because it looks so beautiful and angelic, like very Victoria's Secret model on the face. I'm gonna be using the Makeup Forever Radiant one today just because I go back and forth between these two because I really do love them both. And I just feel like this one really does help prolong my foundation and everything holds up better and looks more natural throughout the day as it wears. And by the way, make sure when you are applying your primer that your hands are clean. It seems so simple, but for instance, I washed my face this morning, then I ran 5,000 errands, and now I'm doing my foundation, and I washed my hands just right before I sat down to film. If you don't, that's just gonna spread bacteria very quickly, and then you can be breaking out and have no idea why, and it can be something as simple as washing your hands before you apply your primer. I'm actually gonna apply a little bit of the Makeup Forever Smoothing Primer as well. This is totally unnecessary. You do not need to use two primers in order to go in with foundation but because I can just be high maintenance when it comes to makeup like that, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that smoothing primer and just put it right here because this is my problem area of um, like I'll break out and sometimes get some texture in here. And I woke up this morning and my skin was just not happy. I don't know what happened, but I woke up this morning, my sinuses are all like congested, I have a bad headache and I have some texture right here. So I'm like, what's going on? Like what happened in my sleep? So apparently I had a rough night. So I'm just gonna put that right here in the center of my face and then we are all good to go in with foundation. 
Okay, so for the actual foundations I'm going to be using today, I have been using these nonstop recently, and they are the Cover FX Natural Finish Oil Free Foundations. I do have two colors because, like I said, I'm high maintenance when it comes to makeup. Um, no shame. This is G30 and this is G50. So I could just buy G40 and call it a day, but G50 is my tan color after I have self tan. G30 is my like, oh my god, you're butt white and you need to get a tan shade. So I always mix different parts of these. So today it's going to be like seven. 25% of G30 and 25% of G50 because I'm pretty pale. So I'm going to take G30 on the back of my hand and I'm going to just squeeze it out like that. And then I'm going to take G50, which is the darker shade and do a little bit less, just like right next to it. Now I'm gonna take a beauty oil and I'm using the Blissful Body Miracle Beauty Oil and Serum. Whatever beauty oil you have will work, but this is my absolute favorite. And I'm literally going to take one drop, no joke, one drop, because any more than that is gonna be too much. So just like, oh, one drop, that's it. And it will make the biggest difference in your foundation, like, oh my gosh, you have no idea. So now I'm gonna mix that up on the back of my hand and make a little foundation beauty oil cocktail, if you will. And now I'm going to take whatever is on my finger and dab it on my face. Put it down here so we can blend onto the neck as well. Now, a lot of times you guys have seen me in my videos spritz fix plus on a brush before I go in and I blend it out. When you're using a beauty oil in your foundation or any sort of oil, you do not want to spray fix plus or any sort of hydrating water onto your brush to blend it out because water and oil do not mix together. You see it like in salad dressing and you shake it up and it immediately separates. So what's going to happen on your face. If you use something like fix plus on your brush and try to blend it out, your foundation will literally be separating as you're blending it and that's not a good look. So I'm going to be taking the Tarte foundation brush. I don't mean, this doesn't even have a name. It just says Tarte on it. Um, I'm absolutely in love with the Morphe 5, M539 brush, I believe it's called. Where are you? Right here. Morphe 439 brush. I have just been using this one recently because of the fact that I just wanted to switch it up a little bit. I hadn't tried this one before and I really, really do love it. But honestly, if I had to recommend one over the other, I would recommend the Morphe one because it is so amazing. It's so inexpensive. It offers full coverage and it's easy to apply. The difference between this one is it's much bigger so it covers a lot more ground than this one. It applies your foundation a little bit more sheer, but I will say this one is actually kind of rough on my skin as opposed to this one, which is a lot softer on the skin. But I really love them both. But for like the past two weeks, I've been using, yeah, two weeks, right? Week and a half, I've been using the Tarte one. So that is what I'm gonna be using today. So I'm just gonna go in and begin to blend this out. And you're gonna see this is not the color of my face, which is okay, and that is the way that it's supposed to be. Because if you look at my neck, and if you look at my face, they are, like if you look at my forehead now, and you look at my neck, they are two different colors. So I do not want my face foundation to be a different color than my neck so I'm intentionally darkening it so that it matches my body seriously so thick even with this oil it is still like like I really make sure I blend it out and pick up any excess because it is thick all right now cover the forehead Ooh, looks so yellow on my white ass I'm gonna pull this mirror closer sorry you're going to be able to see it in the camera if you don't mind, but I need to see what I'm doing a little bit better. Okay, so now for concealer, I'm going to be using the Urban Decay Naked Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer. This is my favorite concealer at the moment. I think it's my favorite concealer that I've ever used. I don't even like see myself using anything else unless I invent something better because I feel like this is just so amazing. It's full coverage and hydrating, which you just don't find. The MAC Pro Longwear Concealer was full coverage, but it was so drying and like a glue and like a paste. This one, it's just beautiful. So I'm going to put this on the sides of my nose, bring it down here, and I'm going to swoop it towards the temple. And then I am going to bring it down along the side like this. And then I am going to pull it around the nose and put it right here on the cupid's bow. The reason I put concealer on my cupid's bow is because for some reason my foundation always leaves my cupid's bow. I don't know why, but that's just a personal thing. And then right here, that is just gonna help to brighten that area. And around the nose, I do that because we, as women, are it's just hormones. We usually get red around here throughout the day. If you'll notice, your foundation, your powder can tend to wear off and you can get red right there. So that's why I put the concealer right there. Now I'm gonna be using the Real Techniques Beauty Sponge to blend this out. This is very similar to a beauty blender, but it's like half the price. And I think I like it even better because it has the flat side to it like this. And you can really get up in that eye area 
and blend things out, which I love. I always bring my concealer on my eyelids if I have not done my eye makeup already because this is how I personally prime my eyes. I've always primed my eyes using concealer and then setting it with powder. That's just my favorite way more than using any primer for the eyes. So that's just how I personally like to do it. Okay, so now that we have gone over all this many times to make sure that it's like dry and we picked up the excess because if you just tap, 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 tap and then walk away, it'll still be kind of wet, can still settle in fine lines. So if you take the time, take the extra 30 seconds to really continue tapping as it's drying, you'll make sure that as it's drying, your sponge will pick up the excess product so that you do not have all that creasing happening on the under eye area and cakiness building up. So now we are going to set everything and I'll show you the way I've been setting things recently that I have been loving. Where is my, oh, there we go. And I'm going to be using, that is not right, I'm going to be using the Kat Von D Shade Light Face Palette, which looks like this. This is my second palette because I went through the first one and I completely use every single dot of this one. I hit pan on this one and I hit pan on this one. So I was like, it's time for the second palette. So I recently bought another one because these highlighting powders are amazing. So I'm going to be using that middle yellow shade right there and then mixing it with that paler shade. And I'm using the Morphe M438 brush, which is extremely, it's the exact same thing as the Sigma tapered highlighting brush, the F35. So if you have either one of them, they are the exact same thing. And I'm going to hit that right there and tap off the excess and then I'm going to set the under eye area. And I always start directly under, tap this way and then tap back in. Make sure that you are not rubbing yet. You can rub in a smooth motion, but not yet. First, you need to just set by tapping and pouncing up and down. So start going out and back in. I'm going to bring that down in this area and put it on the apples of the cheeks. I like to bring this all over this entire area. I like to bring it all the way out to the temple and then all the way down to the corner of the nose. So I want this entire ground right here to be covered and set in this so that nothing in that area moves. I'm gonna take that same powder now and I'm going to hit it on the chin because we do not want an oily chin. No matter how dewy we want our foundation to be, an oily chin <laughs> does not look good. It's one thing to have your cheeks glowing. It's another thing when like your nose and your chin looks oily. It no longer looks pretty and intentional. It looks like, oh, she needs to touch up. And now I'm going to just tap out my forehead one more time because I have the wrinkliest forehead in the entire world. I've had quite a few doctors and estheticians tell me to get Botox in my forehead for preventative reasons because I make so many facial expressions that my forehead has so many premature wrinkles. It is what it is. I make a lot of expressions. Um, because of that, I've tapped out the forehead area a lot because my foundation will crease big time. And then take that same powder that we're still on and lightly apply some powder right there very lightly i am not going to put a lot up here because this is my problem area and it will easily crease so it's one of those things that it's like if you put just the right amount it'll look good and if you go a step too far and you apply too much it'll look bad i'm going to just take a little bit on the nose very small amount because i just don't want it to be shiny and then last but not least i'm just going to hit the eyes and make sure that these are these make sure that these things are completely covered i just don't want to leave my lids with no powder because again putting some powder over the lids will make it easier for your eyeshadow to blend and everything look even the only areas that i didn't set was the upper lip the bottom half of the face and this part of the forehead everything else i set with the highlighting powders from the kat von d shade light palette now, if you have a face powder that you love and you trust, you can use that face powder for everything I just did. I personally don't like using a face powder for those steps because I like the fact that these bring a little bit more light to the face. And after all is said and done, and I've gone and I've bronzed or contoured or added blush or whatever it may be, I just feel like it gives more dimension to the face having that area that's just a little bit lighter than the rest of the skin. I don't want my entire face to be one dimension and one color. I want it to have different shades, different dimensions. That's what's really gonna make your face look very natural and give it a pop and just make it look very glamorous and take your face to the next step, you know what I'm saying? So you can use this method or you can just use a regular face powder and just put that all over your face and that will do the exact same job. It just won't give you the three dimensional effect that a highlighting powder will. 
Keep in mind these highlighting powders have absolutely no shimmer in them whatsoever. So if you are going to be using a highlight powder to set the under eye area or the forehead, the nose, the chin, you are going to want it to be a complete matte highlighting powder. So now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to set the lower half of my face. And I know that that seems so random that I would set this part with a highlighting powder and now I'm gonna set the lower half with a different powder. But the reason why I do this is because recently I have realized that my foundation down here wears off throughout the day because I'm like leaning on my hand and for some reason I hug people. For some reason the lower half of my face is just what gets touched the most and the foundation does kind of break up and come off. So I'm going to be using the Laura Mercier translucent powder which I raved about this powder is so awesome. You can't see it, it's completely see-through, it's translucent, and I'm using the Morphe M528 brush. I believe this is from a new collection of theirs. I'm pretty sure it's a new collection. And then I'm, whew, that was a lot of powder. And then I'm going to just set the lower half of my face. And the reason that I am doing this before I go in with bronzer or blush or anything else is because if you have powder on, powder blends easier over powder than it does over cream. So when I apply my bronzer next, it's gonna apply a lot smoother than it would if I just went straight over my foundation with my bronzer. Since I'm putting a layer of powder in between the bronzer and the foundation, the bronzer is going to go on much smoother and easier. This brush would actually be really nice for contouring. Ooh. Kind of like that idea. Okay, moving on. So now I'm gonna be bronzing, even though I know that doesn't technically need to be involved in this video because this is just my foundation routine, but I just feel like I'm so flat and one dimensional that I need to add some bronzer. So I'm gonna be using my favorite one. This has been my favorite for months now. This is a Makeup Forever 351 bronzer. And I'm going to be using, I'm so excited. This is the MAC 135 brush. I just showed this in my haul and I have not used it yet. So I'm gonna be using it right now for the first time and I hope that I love it as much as I think I'm going to and as much as I loved the old one. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to use this brush. That's just how I remembered. Yes! No! Okay, see right here, I didn't set this area with the translucent powder, and so the bronzer is going on a little bit choppy, and that's what happens. This is something that I have noticed. So I'm going to take a little bit of that translucent powder, just a tiny amount, and I'm going to just put it right there on the sides of my forehead, and then go over with bronzer, and it will go on so much smoother. Ah, yes, much better. My hair could not, could not look worse. There's nothing that I could do at this point to make it worse, honestly. Like it's at its ultimate ugly capacity. Okay, let's throw on a little bit of blush. Okay, what is happening? This is turning into like a full entire tutorial. I'm like, this is just gonna be my foundation routine. I need some blush though. I look stupid. Okay, I'm going to be using the Tarte. Look at how badass this palette is. Like, isn't this so cool? I love Tarte's holiday blush palettes. I think this is my favorite one so far. All right, this is called the Bling It On Palette, the Amazonian Clay Blush Palette. It looks like this. Oh, so pretty. I'm going to mix these two pinks because I feel like I haven't done a pink cheek in a while. So I'm gonna mix Doll Face and Smashing. This is my first time using this palette. So, ooh, yes. Nice and pigmented. Just the way I like it. Oh, this palette is so nice. Oh, and I'm using the Morphe E4 brush to apply this, in case I didn't tell you. But you should know by now, because oh my gosh, I use this brush way too much. It's my favorite. Okay, why do my cheeks look like Bozo the Clown pink on camera? And in real life, they look like just a hint of blush. Just a hint, and on camera, it's like, ah! and in the mirror, it's like, yes. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. Now, since I've done like my blush and my bronzer, I just feel like I need to add some highlight really quickly because let's get real, like I can't leave the, I can't do anything without highlight. So I'm going to just highlight the tops of my cheekbones really quickly. And I'm going to be using the Becca Champagne Glow Palette that comes out this, when does it come out? Oh my gosh. It comes out on the 27th of October. It looks like this inside. It has blush copper, champagne pop, and pearl, which are all three limited edition. And I'm going to be mixing champagne pop and pearl together to create a 
much lighter version of Champagne Pop. And I'm going to apply that just on the tops of the cheekbones. I love pearls so much, I want them to make it permanent. It's so gorgeous. Now we are going to set everything. I'm going to be using the Urban Decay Chill Makeup Setting Spray. I use a pretty decent amount of it, and sometimes I will go back in with a second layer of that spray, just depending how powdery I feel. The point of a makeup spray is that it will really help the powder that you put on the skin not look as powdery and kind of combine the foundation and the powders together so that everything lays and looks a little bit more natural as opposed to it looking like layers of things sitting on your skin. If you're really looking for a dewy effect, I would do the um, MAC Fix Plus. And if you're looking for something that is very dewy, the ultimate dew fest is the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. And look, that's how low I am. That's how much I love this product. I love it. I will actually spray a little bit of the Tatcha. One more, just for fun. All right, you guys, so that completes my current foundation routine for the fall slash winter months, even though I would totally do this in the summertime because I'm just dry like that, and so I will totally add oil to my foundation year round. But my favorite thing about adding the oil to my foundation is the fact that if you just add the oil into a already dewy foundation, you're gonna look oily throughout the day. That's just fact. You might like that, that's totally personal preference, but we went in and we covered up all of the foundation and the oil with a powder. So even though we have that oily, creamy base, we covered it up with a matte finish. So it's like matte powder with oily base underneath and when those two collide, it just makes a really pretty kind of flawless, natural looking foundation. So I absolutely love this technique. I will be using this throughout the entire winter, I'm sure, and for the rest of my life. So I hope that you guys enjoy this as well. And if you are oily, do not be afraid to try this. I know so many people are so scared when you're oily, you don't wanna put oil on your skin, but remember that oil combats oil. So if your skin is excessively oily, you may wanna try using an oil at night before you go to bed, or maybe a touch in your foundation, because it could mean that your body actually needs more oil and that is why it's overproducing it. So don't be afraid to give it a shot someday. You know, don't try it before prom or your wedding day on a special occasion, but you know, just like a Tuesday, give it a shot and see how it works. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. I'm going to stop talking now. I know this has been such a long video. I'm sorry, you guys, but I hope that you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.